this week's episodes. Is Ergo a waste of money? Is it worth your money? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. We're going to figure it out today. We're going to work through it. Here we go. Here we go. All the time, people say to me, Ergo's great. Ergo's bad. Do we need Ergo? All I hear from plant to plant is we have Ergo. First, I think we determine is what are we even talking about? Because well, and I think that this is a really, really good one. So we're getting ready to start a cost series as it relates to safety. So how do we manage cost and safety? Where do we find that cost savings for the continuous improvement Correct. we're looking for? Everyone's budget conscious. And you guys asked for us to cover some stuff on Ergo. Yeah, people so asked. We're going to start with Ergo because that is a big one. And it's usually the thing that falls off when we start getting shorthanded and we right. get behind on stuff. We usually don't do Ergo stuff. So let's talk about it. Is that important or not? All right. So the first one is... I don't have an ergo problem at my plant because we have turnover. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about it. That's what I hear all the time. <laughs> well, so I guess it really is dependent on what you manufacture, what your business is. Because Absolutely. I can tell you on the poultry side, that is some of the most frequent cases we see are new employees because we didn't do the rampant at Maybe all. Maybe they caused the turnover with yeah. the ergo. We, yeah, well, we didn't do it. Yeah, yeah, so we've got the turnover because of the high piece counts or we didn't do the work hardening, but we had a lot of ergo issues on the poultry side that we've seen because they just, it, it's very physically demanding right. in I some thought, jobs. I thought the cow hide was ergo. I saw poultry, I'm like, oh no. Oh yeah, the, the, <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, the twisting and yeah, stuff. Their yeah. ergo is a lot different on the poultry side. So I think, I think the first thing we want to do is really kind of expand what we consider ergonomics right so it's, it's palletize it's, it's, so it's more than just i do i do count with a knife yeah it's it's more than the three top we things expi- yeah we want to expand our view past its palletizing right. box makeup and we fix it by getting and, a new conveyor and and knife handling that's jobs right. right what could be presenting an issue that's past the production floor what about the outlying jobs yeah. our you know? our company ergo eight, eight hour 10 hour 12 hour drive that's yeah. our Argo. Or standing for 10 to 12 hours. Absolutely. Or we got to do a six Extremes. hours. <laughs> yeah. And we're out in the weather. I mean, those are those are our Argo. We have yeah. To look at. So, so I think part of it is anything that's extreme one direction or another. Absolutely. I- including it could be both sides of the spectrum. So anything I, I that's get, really hot, really cold, anything that's standing or sitting for prolonged periods of time. I get promoted out. when I'm handling chemicals. So okay. now I'm the one that does all the heavy lifting with the massive, yeah, massive beginning. <laughs> I, I'm yeah, the yeah, one, yeah, yeah. not the end user. Yeah. The end user's got the small container. And Me, they roll it I, around. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the ergo one. Yeah. But it looks like they would have the ergo because they're actually doing it more, but yeah. their risk is lower than mine. Because they're not able or allowed maybe at that facility to mix or type. That's correct. Right. Yeah. And it's the weight of it. It's the yeah. containers, but I'm still doing it every night. I made it do 100 times a night, but doing 50. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's the weird stuff like that. So people do get caught up in well, it's a small. You do it a hundred times. It's a lot, but it could it could be the size of the containers or what we're doing. Yep. All right. So here's one that gets me. So I travel a lot. Everybody yep. knows that new plants all the time. A lot of times yep. I go there for three hours, five hours, five days. I don't know. But I will tell you, you put a hard hat on me, and I will tell you instantaneously if I think that hard hat feels good or not in about fifteen minutes, to eight hours. Yeah. Because ergo, it's <laughs> so quite a time span. Yeah, it is. But the point <laughs> is, ergo. People will say, well, they wore this PPE for days. There wasn't a problem. But some people, like when I'm new, I can feel it. So as a new hire, yeah. the new hire, if you put PPE on them, they'll, you don't have to worry about ergo at that moment because they're going to tell you it feels weird. And they're yeah. already having problems. So now making them wear the wrong size PPE or the wrong hard hat, the wrong glove, now, that could be your ergo from day one. I, I think part of it is, so in our industry, we have to have PPE that meets a multitude of needs, right? We've got to meet the food safety stuff. We've got to meet the safety stuff. You know, some of it is, because of the maintenance teams or the chemical Absolutely. handling. So there's a lot going on that each item has to meet specific standards for expectations for. Right. But I think it's really important to remember first it's PPE. We're all built a little differently. Correct. So some things that are going to cause pressure in different parts. I mean, it, it should be, I get to select that's part of it. There is, we select hearing pre- protection. Yeah. There's pre-approved styles yeah. that we are aware that meet the the needs that we have. And then they get to pick because again, everybody's shaped different. I'm very cognizant of this because as a female, most PPE in my past, it's getting better now 
but most historically has been made right. for a male. And so it's all way too big, which is constantly with the gloves. Why is every pair of gloves right. a size large or extra large? Why is every pair of boots that I get not fitting me? That's a trip hazard. It's a slip hazard. It's also weird on my legs when I'm walking around for eight hours on a production floor. It hurts my calves and my legs because I'm having to do something weird with my feet to keep them from falling off when I'm moving around. So it could be the thickness of the clothing, like thick how pants, it fits. like it's, arc flash. You, you yeah. put arc flash on Jen. So Jen got some arc flash gear. Yeah. I've got a ago. lot of cat too. stuff. And, yeah. And, and you know, the arc flash I was wearing at the plants was super thick. Well, it weighs on you all day long and yeah. it's hot. She was yeah. able to give her a different style. So she had the same arc flash hazard reduction, but from an Argo side, mine is way heavier and way yeah. harder. Even though that you would think in the old days that was backwards, but now she has the better outfit. Yeah, I do. Well, and that's the thing. So I think it's really important, especially in the PPE side, that we don't gear everybody up to prevent the injury just to cause it on the ergo side. I mean, I, I'm thinking of even like my farms. If we've got coveralls at my farms and that are too big. big and we keep adjusting all the time, yeah. it, you know, it, it's weird all day long. Yeah. And, and that can be, even if it's not necessarily an ergo injury, because of that constant adjusting of stuff, that can still cause an injury in yeah. other ways too. So I, so I also look at ergo some of the repetitive. So yeah. it, not just repetitive as in doing the task, but that. So I, I catch my eye Continuous if I see adjusting. them completely. Yeah. yeah. All right. So here's a here's the one forklifts. All right. Okay. You told me that if I drive a forklift, I got to face forward when yeah. I drive it, so I don't yep. run over everybody. Yeah. But you also Seems told fair. me as a safety manager, plant. You can't drive with a bunch of pallets because you can't see around. So now you got to drive backwards everywhere. Yeah. With that forklift, you you're never gave me a chair that. to turn around. Yeah. So your neck is. My whole day way. on the forklift is turned. Yeah. My whole day because the safety pause. So, yes, ergo may not have caught that was an issue, but it's mm -hmm. forcing me from the safety side because I'm carrying these eight or nine pallets. I'm always turned backwards. Absolutely. So now I'm always sore. I'm always tilted. And now it's. Hard. It's yeah. hard me all day yeah, long. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, that chair's not made to do that. Right, right. So that's one of that's our ergo. So that's yeah. one of our ergo. All right. So another one is everyone has a top 10 yep. for ergo. And they say, here they are. We're going to do knife handling. We've got this. We've got that. That's great. But what I look for is how many of the top 10 reduce the risk and I get a money payback on. Yes. So what I look at ergo is, I don't look at ergo as, as a $50,000 machine that fixes the problem. Mm -hmm. I look at what when I'm putting a, a plan in place, ergo, what is the thing I can get the most payback on? Yep. And then as I do that, it seems to be easier to sell the ergo idea. So if Absolutely. I say, if I, I can look show at production, that return on investment. At, that's right. Look at the labor is not as bad and the piece count has went down, or maybe it's the, it's the, the weight is reduced. So that's how I look at ergo. I'm yes. And I know that's things you're supposed to do, but realistically we've worked in plants where it just doesn't happen. So yeah. I think when you're when you're looking at Ergo overall and you're saying is it worth my money or not, you got to look at ROI. Yeah, you got to look at how that and then sell that if you're the safety manager, or the Ergo manager, sell it. Look what I can do yeah. and how it helps us out. Well, and I think a, a big thing that you can evaluate if you are a facility that's experiencing a lot of turnover is that the jobs that you're seeing the most turnover in that might also have a correlation Absolutely. to Ergo. And if it does, you're seeing lots of turnover and you have ergo issues with it that might be a good one to look at automation on absolutely all right another one i look at is work designs so i don't look at work design as in where i'm doing the task in front of me mm -hmm. i look at the work design is how many times i have to go around the area i'm working and how many other steps i gonna do so maybe mm -hmm. my ergo is not my shoulders my ergo is my feet always stepping and twisting over a pipe or, yeah. or like, like a cryovac. Yeah. You got the discharge side How and always stepping on. Stepping and over this weird drain or Yeah, whatever. and yeah. I'm getting this piece of plastic every time and I'm always leaning over to do it. I mean, yeah. That's the stuff that sometimes yeah. people miss when they look at ergo because they'll evaluate, well, I stand to do the job this what? way. Well, I think that's exactly it. So the ergo assessment is designed to say, what is this job task? I'm going to watch their job task but we're not evaluating the environment sometimes to see, yeah, but in order for them to do their job task, this other stuff is weird over here. Right. Every so, so often. So I use that so time. Every, every time a forklift comes in or every time That's somebody- correct. They have to know, move to the left yeah. a couple of weeks. So I use that ergo assessment as that. Is What can I engineer out around the person yeah. in their working area to have less ergo other issues? Yeah. Can we 
adjust their their work setting so that they're not having to bend, twist, walk all all That's over correct. the place and and carry this stuff at a weird angle. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. So that reduces my injuries. It makes my profit go up. Yep. And it gets rid of my my maintenance, always complaining that something's always getting kicked or something's always getting mm-hmm. loose. Stood on or whatever. Right. Well, yeah. it's because of that design of that workstation yep. isn't right. So I, mm-hmm. I will use the ergo assessment. But as I do that, I will look at all the other things. And if I can engineer out those other controls, That's I a actually great can point, lo- lower my hazard. You know, you tape. start looking at, do I have an ergo job potentially? And you evaluate, well, what, what's my repair and maintenance like in this department? And if Correct. I start seeing a lot of weird repair and maintenance stuff that's repetitive from production employees doing a, a certain task, so sure. maybe it's standing on something or stepping right. on something, well, that would be a great trigger for me to look at. Hey, I can get a little bit safer environment for my employee, and I can also reduce my my repair right. and maintenance costs too. Right. So I, so, so when that's I, your ROI. Yeah. So when I look at ergo, whether it's, it's a cost or not, I use it in different ways when yeah. I'm doing those assessments. Yeah. So really it's an environment evaluation and a hazard evaluation. It's not exclusively just, am I bending and twisting and have lots of repetition? It's, right. it's a bigger thing. Cause I'm looking, I'm looking for everything they're doing that day. Not, and I'm yeah. also looking at the last part is I'm looking at if that person's gone, and we had a call, someone called vacation. So Joe's the fill in for your job whenever you're gone. Mm-hmm. You had an ergo assessment the way you did it. And I'm throwing it in there tomorrow and I haven't done it in six months. My ergo assessment is going to be completely different. Yeah. So you've got to calculate that people are going to take vacation. People yeah. are going to take days off and someone's going to fill in. So I have two ways. I have the ergo, how they normally do it. Yep. And then I'm like, okay. But how did that person who has it in six months going to come in and be able to do it just like that? And again? it's and it goes back to that turnover issue because that's something very similar to bringing a new employee if they haven't been doing it for six months. To me, they're basically a new employee. Because Absolutely they, they for that job. Have, for that job. Yeah, they don't it. have that that buildup of that work hardening. Correct. To to help them out to prevent that injury. All right, here's another ergo one. I'm a maintenance person at a plant. And they give me the biggest belt I can carry <laughs> with as many tools possible. And there's no weight per tool calculation. I don't want to go back to the shop because it's right. kind of far. So, yeah. So, so I'm going to carry everything, everything with me. With me. <laughs> yes. I'm like, okay, get them a cart. <laughs> you yes, know, get them something. something. Put, yeah. it, put, a, put a central station somewhere that yeah. has a lot of the tools so they can get access. So that it's not the yeah. walking. The ergo to me is the belt, but the reason is because they don't want to walk so far. Yep. So put a central station, like a mini, like we, we got toolboxes on the top of the house, the bottom of the house, my barn. We, why? Yeah. Because we don't want to walk all the way over there. So I don't want to carry the tools. So that ergo assessment is not about the weight they're just carrying. Go back and figure out why. Why are we doing yeah, it Why that are they way? doing that task? And yeah. talk to them. Say, why do you yeah. not want to walk back there? And they tell you, because I've never seen anybody going weigh all the tools they're carrying and saying, well, you're over the limit. You can't take that now. You know, yeah. so that you have to manage that. The reason. And I don't so, think we're suggesting you do that. <laughs> no, but we're just saying realistically, that's your it ergo. Is, it is it, a lot of weight. It's and to it travel. Does, especially for someone who is not used to doing that. There's going to be some back pain there. Absolutely. All right. And my last ones here. If you do any kind of hose handling. Daytime, nighttime. The number one thing I tell everybody is, hey, when you carry a hose at the end of your shift, you're the tires. Yeah. You're the most sore. Most of That's the time. When yeah, get. when you're putting but it away. But the ergo evaluations are always about doing the work during the shift. Mm-hmm. And most of my injuries come the last 30 minutes from taking that 200-foot heavy hose that is uncontrol what size and length and weight there are per yeah. location. Yeah. Or is it two people? Is it one person? Right. You know, should it be two people carrying it? Do I put it in a pallet? Do I put it in a combo? What did I do? Yeah, what trash am I doing can? With this? Yeah. Because I, that's because so, so don't look at ergo as, as just the shift. And I'm doing that job 40 times. It's P it's, it goes back to the, it's personal to right. a certain degree too. So there's I mean, only, we can there's all only handle different, things in terms of weight absolutely and, and, and at the of end that. of shift there's only certain people that do that task yeah that's what you're evaluating you're evaluating yeah. you're the tiredest i'm five eight i'm carrying 150 foot of hose through a plant that's trying to get running and it's so wet it's and i wet. might so be having stairs that's and... that's my injury absolutely. slash ergo site because that's when the weight and the problems i'm having are really affecting me yeah it was yeah. bad all night but that's when it ramps up that next level yep so what can I do to engineer out? So to close here today, these are our opinions. Please do a thorough rest assessment. Yep. 
And if you want some more stuff on Ergo, you know, yes, we have done some hazard evaluations, some Ergo stuff. You can kind of see what we do and some of the services we offer over at allen-safety.com. You can check us out on any of the socials, Joe Allen and Jen Allen on LinkedIn. You can follow us there. Otherwise, at Allen Safety LLC is our handle on pretty much everything. So YouTube, um, Facebook. Yeah, we do have a YouTube channel, don't we? We do have a YouTube channel. So you can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all the things. And let us know what you think. Drop us a like. Share this if it helped you. And well, I think that's it. We'll see you next All time. Right. Thank you, everyone. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you for listening to Safe, Efficient, Profitable, a worker safety podcast. If you're looking for more in-depth discussions or step-by-step solutions on all of the different safety and regulatory topics, please visit us at www.allensafetycoaching.com for web-based virtual coaching and training or at www.allen-safety.com to book our team for on-site services, training sessions, to order merchandise, to learn more about our team and what services we provide in the field, or just simply to request a topic for us to cover on our next podcast. If you found today's podcast helpful and would like to support our podcast further, please help us by subscribing, liking, and sharing this podcast with anyone that could benefit from the information we cover here as that helps us to continue to put out this free content. Thank you so much for your support.